welcome to Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. I'm your host, Thomas Connolly, and I happen to be a gay actor, and I live in the gayest city of them all, West Hollywood, California. Now, today's episode is about the gayest celebrity ever, and the real kicker is he never admitted to being gay. He's the only person I know that could wear flaming red sequined hot pants, a floor length chinchilla cape, a rainbow bejeweled headdress, while every woman in the audience thinks he's the paragon of a straight man. Now you must know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the iconic, the legendary, the hilarious Liberace. Take a look at some of these getups. Ooh, these outfits, oh, look at that one. These outfits would even make Cher blush. Now, to his credit, Liberace was the highest paid entertainer in the world from the 1950s to the 1970s. He was one of the first performers to establish the concept of a residency in Las Vegas, starting with the Riviera Hotel in the 1950s. He was famously dubbed Mr. Showmanship. Liberace, called Lee by his friends, suffered from a speech impediment and was mercilessly mocked by the kids in school for his effeminate personality, his avoidance of sports, and his fondness for cooking and playing the piano. Now, this is what I love about Liberace. Rather than shy away from all this harassment and bullying, Liberace doubled down. Yes, in high school, Liberace became well known for his fastidious, attention-getting, colorful fashion choices. And this wound up making him very popular. Liberace learned right away how to grab the limelight. Now, after high school, Liberace helped out his family, who was suffering through the Depression, by playing the piano in strip clubs under the name Walter Buster Keys. Walter what? Liberace learned early on that the secret to his success was not just sitting there silently and playing a classical piece of music. Oh, no. He learned to interact with the audience. In his early 20s, Liberace got a gig at the Paps Theater in Milwaukee, and he advertised his show as classical music with the boring parts left out. And right out of the gate in his early 20s, Liberace learned to take requests from the audience, do interpretive dance moves, make jokes, and he would even give an impromptu piano lesson to a lucky member of the audience. Liberace would mix serious classical music with lighter fare. For example, he'd do Chopin with Home on the Range. By 1945, Liberace added the legendary candelabra to every performance performance, which became his trademark. Liberace was an extremely shrewd businessman. He was way ahead of his time. Liberace debuted his television show, aptly titled The Liberace Show, on July 22nd, 1952, and it was a ratings juggernaut. It debuted to over 30 million people and sustained that for years, then Liberace syndicated all these shows to local markets and for reruns, and he wound up making 80% of the profits, some $7 million a year in the 1950s. Naturally, with every passing year, the costumes, the props, the pianos became unbelievably more extravagant and grandiose. This television exposure made him ripe for a hugely successful concert tour business. He broke records everywhere, from Havana, Cuba, to London, England, to Radio City Music Hall in New York City. Now, from early on, Liberace said that his goal was to be a major concert headliner and a movie, television, and recording star. And he succeeded in all those pursuits, except for one. He bombed in the movies. His one big movie was in 1955 called Sincerely Yours, which was about a concert pianist who goes deaf. 
the film was an unmitigated disaster, both critically and commercially. Oh no, I love this part. They asked Doris Day, one of my favorites, to play his love interest, his leading lady in the film. Doris Pass giving it a hard no. She actually said, are you kidding me? They'd actually buy Mickey Mouse as my loving husband more than Liberace. Well, as always, Doris Day turned out to be right. Now, her role as the leading lady love interest went to Academy Award winning actress Dorothy Malone. But sincerely yours ended Liberace's movie career once and for all. But he proceeded to break all records for his Las Vegas appearances. Now, it must be noted that Liberace sold millions of albums as well, but he was never public about his gayness. It didn't mean that other people weren't. He was constant fodder for the big comics of the day, like George Carlin, Groucho Marx, and Jack Parr. The columnist William Connor of the Daily Guardian, which was a British newspaper, had the audacity to refer to Liberace as a gay man. Can you believe it? And Liberace sued him. Oh, this is what William Connor said. You got to hear this. Liberace is a fruit flavored, mincing, winking, sniggering, ice covered heap of homosexual love. Newspaper. Liberace sued the newspaper, and in 1955, when it finally went to court, Liberace purged himself on the stand when he denied that he was a gay man. And Liberace successfully won this lawsuit, and he got a judgment of 8,000 pounds, which is well worth over a million dollars in today's money. Also, Liberace also successfully sued an American magazine, Confidential, in 1960, that referred to him as a, oh, fairy. Scott Thorzen was Liberace's longtime boyfriend of 10 years. He started out as Liberace's chauffeur, then he was promoted to be a dancer in Liberace's stage show in Vegas. Well, he unsuccessfully sued Liberace for palimony. Liberace wound up dying of AIDS on February 4th, 1987, and he went to his grave claiming he was a heterosexual man. I get that Liberace in real life was a conservative Republican, and I get that Liberace was afraid that his homosexuality might threaten his career and his livelihood. But I, but I also get that Liberace could have made a huge impact for LGBT awareness if he stood in his truth as an openly gay man for all those housewives who were conned into thinking he's a straight man. And like the title of this episode says, Liberace was the gayest celebrity ever. Uh, it's not like he fooled anyone. And when you're not honest about who you really are and everyone knows you're gay, you send a message that something is pretty creepy and wrong with it. We, but we still love you, Liberace. You'll be forever remembered as Mr. Showmanship. You are one of a kind. Well, this is Thomas Connolly for Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. If you like what you see, could you please like and subscribe? That would really help to sustain our show. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you.